Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, famous verse. We all know this. You probably don't need to turn to it, but we're going to turn to it and because I'm going to read not just that verse. I'm going to read several verses there. Actually, let's read re- Romans chapter 8, verse 1. If you don't have a Bible, just follow along. And uh, I want you to pay attention. I want you to wake up physically and spiritually for this. This is a life-changing, every message that is preached is a life-changing message. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you listen, you will, it will help you in your walk with God. There are too many people sleeping through their Christian life. And I don't want that anymore for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, we know Romans 8.28 says we know all things work together for, or no, sorry, Romans 3.23 says, uh, um, Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that. Amen? We are all sinners. But God says that if we walk after the Spirit, capital S Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit of God, if we walk after the Spirit, we will walk in His steps. Simply put it. Easy said, isn't it? It's pretty easy said. But sometimes we step away. Okay, how many people here uh, saw Nick Walenda as he walked across the tightrope across the the Niagara Falls, uh, the the, the actual falls? We saw that. Um, and he and, and he walked like this. And, and as I as he was walking, I was thinking he's nuts. I'd never do it. How many people would do it? How many people would like to walk across a tightrope, uh, a three inch tightrope, not even three inches, probably two and a half inch tightrope, across Niagara Falls? Now he didn't. Now he had a tether he strapped to him. However, he wanted to walk without the tether. So, Ramona, would that be stupid? Walking across the falls on a tightrope without a tether, either with or without a tether. That'd be pretty dumb, wouldn't it? Yeah. Why do we Christians walk a very slippery slope in our Christian life when we dab into sin? You know, uh, 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 every day we, we make excuses for our sins. You know, smokers say, oh, I don't have the willpower. Uh, e- eaters like myself, we, we fell off the wagon. It's easy to do. Um, uh, uh, drinkers, they, they fall off the wagon. They Liars say, well, it's easier to tell a lie rather than tell the truth because I might not get in trouble. You will. Uh, uh, whatever the it is easier for us, uh, uh, we think in our hearts, that it is easier for us to, 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 to stay in our sins. We have the wrong friends. Well, I just don't want to offend them. You know what? You ought to be worried you offend God rather than some ungodly person. Can I get an amen on that? And if you got unsaved friends and you got wrong friends, don't you dare say amen. Because that's hypocritical. But my dear friends, we oftentimes we find ourselves dabbing into sin. And it usually starts by not listening to godly counsel, not listening to preaching, and not reading your Bible. That's where it starts. It usually starts with not reading your Bible and not praying to God. That's the first thing that goes. We, uh, we say we trust God, but we do not tithe. We say we trust God, but we don't, uh, we don't serve the Lord. We say that it's, hey man, it's really great to, to be a child of God, but we don't act like a child of God. We say, or, uh, we say we want to win souls, but we don't tell anybody about winning soul about Jesus Christ. We say we want to be a blessing, but we're a cursing. 
We say we want to go to church, but we sleep in church. We play with our video things. The reason why we don't, the reason why that the 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 uh, Wi-Fi password is 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 protected, is hidden, that only a few people, only actually one person in this church that knows what it is, is because I don't want people, youngins, to have the password sitting in the back there. Oh, there's the password. And I'm gonna play with my my tablet all afternoon or all day. Or or, 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 or people, adults, on their cell phone all day. We say we want to live for the Lord, but we don't show the actual actions, and every one of us, including myself, are guilty of that times. You wanted to come tonight for a lovey-dovey, hand-holding, singing kumbaya service? You came for the wrong service tonight. Go to the Pentecostal church across the street. They might, sing, they might give you a lovey-dovey service. But tonight I want to tell you that every, principle number two, every origin, every sin has its origin where? In our heart. Why? Because our heart is desperately wicked. You know who most people, including Christians, are out for? Number one, themselves. Well, I'll come to church because I want to have a bless. I want to... Uh, you know, here's the thing. Most single people that are borderline in their walk with God will come to church because they don't want to be at home by themselves. And they sit there like this. They sit like this. They'll sit and look around. If they're paying attention at all, they're paying attention to people around them. Or they'll sit there and go like this. The light's out. <sighs> I need a nap. And they'll either physically nap or, 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 or just zone out. And they just don't care. My dear friends, it is time, if you, it is time us Christians, we either put up or shut up. It is time that we decide to whom side we are on. Do you want to have an abundant life? God saved us to have life and have it life more abundantly. Are you the, still the old man? Well, I got this sin and I got that sin and I got this and I got that and I got this and I got that. But it probably stems from whom you are hanging out with. What you're watching on TV, what you're watching on the internet, who you're talking to, It used to be so hard to, 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 when I was young, so hard to get into trouble. You didn't, man, I, I, there wasn't half the, 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 the sin wasn't at our fingertips. You know, smart, I remember when my wife and I first got married, we had dial-up internet. How many, do you remember dial-up internet, sir? And you couldn't call you couldn't call anybody. And it was dial up and if it worked, man, I checked my emails three times a day. If that. Amen. Somebody called, it was a busy signal. Or if you had call waiting, somebody called and kicked you off the internet. My dear friends, we know that everything, every sin in our life, is bad. Amen? Listen to me. There is no little sin and no big sin. The wages of sin is death. You falling asleep at the switch is a sin. And I'm tired of it. In my life, I'm tired of it. We are all sinners. So, 
When sin rears his ugly head, you want to have victory over sin in your life? A couple of you do, the rest don't. I, I'm here, I'm going to ask the question again. Maybe you might get, I might get an amen. Do you want to have victory over the sin in your life, yes or no? Amen. Write these four points down. I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be elegant. I'm not going to be. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be flamboyant tonight. It's going to be straight and to the point. Number one, find out what the Bible says and obey it. Find out what the Bible says about your sin that you're dabbing in and obey it. Pretty simple, isn't it? For every sin we have, every sin we have in our life, there is an answer. To it in the Bible. Everyone. Smoking. Is it a sin? Absolutely it is. But I don't have the willpower to stop, Pastor. Yeah, you do. In Christ, you do. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Okay, he's drinking alcohol. Sin. Absolutely it is. Well, I don't have the willpower to stop. Yes, you do. In Christ, you do. Uh, and the problem is they're not in Christ. How can you be in Christ when you don't know what the Bible says? You ever not read your Bible for, for, for a day? And realize when you look back at the end of the day how much you messed up that day? You ever, has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. Why? Because you didn't find out what the Bible said. But you said, well, how can I, 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 I got all these sins. Well, that's where it's study to shoot thyself approved unto God works in. 2 Timothy 2.15. You got to study what the Bible says. Well, I don't have the tools, pastor. Well, then, hey, uh, nobody's ever came to me. Nobody has ever came to me in, in this church and says, pastor, I've got this sin. Can you give me verses to help me overcome this sin? Not in a long time. My dear friends, we got to study what the Bible says and obey it about our sin. You say, does Bible, the Bible have the answer to my, to my smoking addiction? Yes, it does. Does the Bible have the answer to my, uh, my, my, my uh, slothfulness addiction? Yes, it does. Or sin? Yes, it does. Does the Bible have the, my lying? Yes, it does. My cheating? Yes, it does. My, 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 my language? Yes, it does. My, my uh, laziness? Yes, it does. It has the answer to all life's problems. Every last one. Every last one. And we may not like it. You ever gone to the doctor and the doctor said something and you didn't like? You thought he was mean? Well, sometimes you go to the Bible, the great physician, God, and God says something and you might not like it. Tough. He knows more than you. Your doctor, your family doctor, has gone to med medical school and has probably been practicing for uh, practicing medicine longer than you have. He probably knows more. Or she probably knows more. Find out what the Bible says and obey it. Number two, mark what caused you to sin and avoid it. Mark what caused you to sin and avoid it. Now, it might be a situation. It might be a TV show. It might be a person. It might be a food. It might be a place. Whatever it is, mark what caused you to, to, to want to desire that sin and avoid it. There are, there are certain foods that I have to... I, I have to stay away from. Now, lately I have not been. I'm being honest with you. Lately I have not been staying away from it. I've been in it. I, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, um, I've, I've been slipping. I've slipped. There are certain people that I have to avoid. Why? Because they cause me to sin. To have the they didn't they didn't hold the gun in my head, but they put the 
their actions or attitudes or whatever the case may be irritates me so much and I have to avoid it. There are um, certain topics with certain people I have to avoid. Why? Because it could cause me to get angry and sin. We need to be careful. If, okay, if, uh, if the bridge was out, the Lauren Bridge was out, and, it, you, and, 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 and there, you know, it had a mudslide and it was out, do you think that they would have a sign saying, bridge out? You would hope so. Okay, bridge out. Would you continue driving? Pardon me, Mrs. Payne? They would block it. But if they had a sign, or, or, or where, it, where, the, where it, um, where it uh, floods by the river, the, the Gilkison, where it floods by the river, and they have the signs, uh, would it be dumb for somebody to drive around the sign? And Would you drive around the sign, Sarah? No, why? Because you get stuck. You could drown and die. Those roadblocks that we need to put up, those signs, mark, the Bible says, mark them that cause division among you, contrary to your beliefs, and avoid them. It all, I, I believe it also applies to mark the things that cause you to, 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 to sin or people that cause you to, to, you know, okay, well, I got some friends that I don't want to offend, but if we go to the bar... But I don't drink. Well, the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Whoa. Well, then get new friends. A amen? Get new friends. Number three, uh, uh, get around the... Uh, number three, get around, the, around godly people. Get around godly people that won't cause you to sin. The right people will never lead you down the wrong path. When we were up in Ottawa, we did the tour of the Parliament buildings, and nice, nice lady, um, um, she was taking us the tour down and. There's part of the Parliament buildings where you can't go. It's it's just the Prime Minister's office uh, on on the hill is is up those stairs, and you just can't go there. You're not allowed to. She didn't take us there. She said, "Oh well, that's the Prime Minister's office up the stairs," and uh, she didn't take us there. She took us down through the thing, and we couldn't go sit in certain. We can't couldn't go sit in the Prime Minister's chair in that in the House of Commons. You couldn't do that. But she took us. She she didn't misguide us. Or mislead us. She was what's the, the what we they call the tour what guide. You know the guide me word guide means one that takes you safely around. Sometimes you need people to hold your hand and, and, and the right people to hold your hand and to guide you. And those are people that you can glean from. Every friend that I have is something I, I have chosen particularly because I can glean something from them. Every last one. I, I, I meet thousands of people, uh, and I don't, and not everybody's my friend. Now, I'm acquaintance with them. I'm friendly to them, but they're not, ever, not everyone is somebody that I want to hang out with every day of the week. Why? Because I know they're not going to guide me to the right. Simple as that. There are, there are Christians who, who, who love the Lord, but are they, they're, they're not in my sphere of close friends. Uh, Facebook, I got all these Facebook friends. Um, and and, and they're, they're not friends, they're just, they should call them what they are, people who want to follow you. 
It's as simple as that. Now, I got some liter legitimate friends on my Facebook, my wife being one of them, Freddie being another one. We're friends, aren't we, dear? And, um, and uh, she won't, I don't have to worry about her uh, uh, posting something that I don't like. I, I, was, uh, I was looking at uh, Facebook uh, this afternoon before I was coming here, and somebody who's one of my Facebook friends posted something about Christmas. And uh, I didn't like that. Didn't like that. Uh, hide that. It's not the first time he's posted something that's pretty nasty. Well, not nasty. Well, there was a couple times he posted something nasty. Um, not nasty, but there was a picture that probably shouldn't have been posted. And I hid. Well, eventually, I, I, I've, I've had one person that posted and and I decided, well, he kept on posting pretty, pretty weird stuff. And I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to be your friend anymore, and I'm going to block you. There are so many people determined by how many Facebook friends they have rather than actually good godly friends, and I'm talking young Christian people. My daughters, and you don't have Facebook. None of you have Facebook. The only reason why I have Facebook is to, to, to associate with my wife's family and some of my, my, my college and career, high school, uh, youth group friends, and that's about it. Why? I want to get myself around godly people that if I do start to sway, that stray, they'll say, hey, come here. You don't want to go over there. Somebody that you don't mind admonishing you for standing in the wrong. We ought to... Get around people that will get us involved in the work of the Lord. Get us involved for praying for people rather than cutting them down. And number four, we have to hide God's word in our hearts. Psalm 119, verse 11, I believe. Yes, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. I like what Brother Currington said. It's not memorizing your, the Bible, because memorization puts it here. Your heart, hide it in your heart. In your heart is how you think. If you are always thinking evil, you probably are thinking evil in your heart first. You know what? There are people that I call, and you know what? I hear here, here. I gotta say this. I gotta say this. I gotta say this. And please, I hope you pay attention. And listen. I hope you all pay attention and listen. There are people that you call and all. How you doing today? Oh well, and it's all negative. And that, that you know why? Because they're probably a negative Nancy, and they don't have God's word in their heart. They just don't care. They sit in church and get nothing out of it. They don't read their Bible. You know, you can hide God's Word in your heart without memorizing it. Do you realize that? You can. You know the principle of the verse. Okay, uh, the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Becca, do you know the golden rule? Do unto others as... That's right. That's the golden rule. That's a good biblical principle. Where do you put it? Is it here? Or is it here? The 16 inches. You can know how to get saved in your head. But unless you travel it the 16 inches down to your heart, you ain't going to get saved. And listen to me, folks. You can know all the scripture in the world you want. And it's up here. But unless it's in here, you're going to wallow in sin. And you will think you could handle it. You know, there are certain people that can't, they, they've quit smoking, they can't be around smokers. They simply can't. Why? Because they know they'll fall back in. It is so sad. 
choose whom you're going to hang out with. Choose what you're going to put in your heart. The heart is desperately wicked above all things. How can we get it to be uh, to think right? By putting, hiding God's word in our heart. And the more God's word we put into our heart, the less we will want to fall and wallow in the sin that doth easily beset us. Amen. What do you got in your life? Is it laziness? Slothfulness? What is it? What sin is in your life that you're just still playing with? You know, it might be cute. The, you know the little baby tigers? How many people, uh, uh, baby little baby Bengal t- snow leopards, Bengal, Bengal tigers? They're so cute, aren't they? Becca, well, you would like one as a pet, wouldn't you? Becca would like one as a pet. <laughs> you know, Sarah comes over. You know, little, I, and, and when they're little, they're cute. Until they get a little bit bigger and they, <laughs> they're still cute, but they're not fun. <laughs> They'll eat you. And my dear friends, the longer you wallow in your sin, the worst, the more damage it'll do. A little Bengal tiger will just bite your your arm, and it it doesn't it doesn't won't pierce your arm. But when it gets a little older, it's going to bite your arm. It's going to pierce the arm, and then when it tastes blood, (laughs) you in trouble. Angel and Rupert dead, gone. (laughs) One child. They're, get, they're gone. My dear friends, the worst, the more we wallow in our sins, the longer we have in our sins. You realize sin has a stench? Sin has a stench. You ever been around a smoker? Just, you ever been around an alcoholic? Even if they're not drinking, they, they still sweat. And you still smell the alcohol. And it permeates. And just as your sin, oh, your spiritual life stinky. Is your spiritual life stinky? Is your does your attitude? If you're in sin, your attitude's gonna stink. Your attitude's gonna to just be horrible. Oh, preacher, I just came for to, 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 to hear it. The lovey-dovey message. Not tonight. So how are you programmed tonight? Every sin has its origins where? In your heart. The meditator. Your heart. What do you got in your life? Are you sleeping through... Through, 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 through life tonight? Are you spiritually sleeping through life tonight? If you are, if you are, you're in for a reawakening. You're in for a desperate, rude awakening.